What's up guys, it's me, your girl Kat Corelli, and this is episode 243 of my Cat Vibe series. And today we're painting another landscape. And uh, for the first time ever, I'm using a wood panel. I haven't painted on a wood panel before, so this is a brand new experience for me. Uh, it feels pretty odd once you get used to the bounciness of the canvas. It gets ridicul ridiculously odd because, you know, nothing back bounces back. And so the feel from the brush stroke is pretty different. It's not better or worse, it's just different, I'd say. Uh, and this is a landscape, um, a place in Spain, in Valencia, called Saplaya. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. Saplaya or Saplaya, I don't know. Um, and it's like this town there and uh, boats and a little port. So what I like about this scene is that the houses are beautifully colorful. Uh, that's something that I particularly enjoy about that region and about Europe, generally speaking. I like it that European houses are sometimes of ridiculous colors, but it kind of looks really cool, I think. So I felt like I wanted to go for something colorful, but I didn't really want to uh, paint yet another fall miniature about, you know, the season, about fall. Uh, I wanted to paint something colorful, nevertheless. Uh, so here I am. And um, this is a unique wood panel because uh, recently I have made myself um, 15 wood panels. And all of them, each one of them is handmade. They're all made out of whatever boards were laying around here, so some boards are thinner, some boards are thicker, and uh, I don't know who bought them for what purpose, but they were laying around, and clearly nobody needed them, so I decided that I will uh, cradle them myself um, and uh, gesso them. But instead of using uh, artist gesso, I used uh, Zinser primer, stain remover and primer. So, uh, this, is my first exp this is my first experiment with such a panel and with such gesso because, you know, it feels different from a regular artist gesso. I love using gambling gesso. Gambling gesso has a little bit of a grit. It is oil-based. But compared to this Zinsser stain primer, um, it feels like it has some grit. Next time, however, I think I'll be adding some marble dust to this uh, Zinsser primer just to thicken it up a little bit and uh, to attain some of that grit, which will facilitate just the, the brush to surface transfer of oil colors. In whichever case, uh, this is the first wood panel and uh, I gotta say it's, uh, it's a different feeling as compared to a canvas. Um, it was challenging in its own way because the surface is so different and I, I could feel how this gesso um, absorbs oil paint differently as compared to the regular artist gesso. It's a different feel altogether. And the feeling from the brush strokes is different and the control over the brush is dif different. They're a different feeling. I gotta say that I, I kind of like the canvas more than a wood panel, but I think in a way, now that I'm painting my second wood panel, I think I'm starting to get a hang of it. Um, ultimately, both are good. So, I guess I just wanted to travel in my mind some other place. I wanted to go somewhere, so I couldn't think of anything better than to just... Um, allow myself to travel to the Mediterranean region and uh, paint something colorful and different. I'd like to go to this place. I'd really love to go here to Spain and also to Italy and also to southern France. 
Um, and I would like to, you know, paint planars. Uh, plain airs and studies and this kind of thing and just landscapes and enjoy the region because you know there's one place on earth where I definitely want to go and I want to spend a lot of time oh there's Tigrick uh, and I want to spend a lot of time there that's the Mediterranean and in my humble opinion I think that's one of the most beautiful regions in the world other than that uh, painting on wood panel. It's quite a bit of fun. Uh, I apologize for not showing up on time as of late. I've been kind of really, really busy with too many things and um, it's not something that I can control. I have to deal with it. It's difficult. And uh, initially in the beginning of in the beginning of fall, I thought that I would be in time to paint more and to produce more videos and to be in time to post some shorts, you know, as well and that kind of thing. I've even expanded to TikTok and started a TikTok, uh, but I'm clearly not in time. I'm finding ways to, um, to optimize my time, optimize my schedule so that I'm in time for more things, but it's just really freaking difficult. Um, regardless of that, you know, just on a side note, I want to say that uh, the single called You Won't Ask, the third single from the upcoming Awarkanum, uh, uh, Gehenna Awarkanum album. Uh, the third single from that album is coming on the 13th. That's just basically two days from now. It's gonna drop and then I'm thinking, should I release the next single in three weeks or in four weeks? And I don't quite know. Because the plan, as of now, is to release the entire album on April 1st. And if I do that on April 1st, um, and I'm aiming for that date, then it kind of really matters, you know, what is the interval between the singles? Is it going to be three weeks or is it going to be four weeks? Um, because, you know, the album has 16 tracks, that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to release that many singles. Uh, I'd maybe go for another three tops. Something like that. But four or five singles, that's way too much, I think. But then again, I don't know. You tell me. Do you want? Here's the here's the question that I'm gonna that I'm gonna ask you on this episode. If the album is gonna drop, the entire album is gonna drop on April first. Do you want to have more singles before April first, or would you be fine with less singles? How do you feel about it? Speak your mind in the comment section. I'll, I'll appreciate this. Also, I want to thank you for uh, for listening to my music here on YouTube. Um, there's going to be a whole series of music-related uh, Cat Vibes episodes, I guess, coming soon. Uh, you know the regular stuff. Uh, my recording process, guitar recording process, you know, like I usually, like I did with uh, the previous album. Um, and with natural grotesque those kind of videos when I'm just you know consolidating footages from different sessions putting it all together and you kind of you can see the guitar play th play through these things of these songs and same is coming for this album I'm actually thinking that probably after this uh, episode after this painting episode I'll put together uh, a playthrough of gone to black and then I will do another painting cat vibes and then after that I will go for another musical um, cat vibes episode something like this and then eventually you will have all the cat vibes um, uh, music episodes related to this album uh, coming out you know in due time so that's something I'm thinking about it shouldn't take that long really 
Sometimes I almost, I almost miss doing cat talks, and uh, it's not that I miss necessarily the topics and talking about all of those things because, you know, I really don't miss that. But I kind of miss the feel of it that you know, once in five days I would get in front of a camera and I would talk about something. Um, I have to say though. And that's one of the important things that I want to uh, put out in this video, which doesn't relate to the painting itself, but it rather relates to all the things that I was thinking about as of late, you know, for the past three months. I've taken down my entire cat talk show, not just because I got tired and kind of burned out of, you know, going on camera and talking about things. No. But Lately, in these past three months, I've learned so much. I've realized that I know so little. And I came to this conclusion that, you know, looking at my older videos especially, um, all except for maybe the last, you know, five episodes, I came to realize that I don't feel like I want this show to be up there on YouTube for people to watch because, not that I'm kind of, you know, I don't feel insecure about this. It's okay. And, you know, this is what I believed or this is what I thought at the time. But I just realized how mm, inadequate my assessments were on a lot of topics. I'm not saying all topics. You know, some of them were nice and pretty much on point. But there is a lot of things just that I didn't know and I didn't understand. And now I can see the bigger picture. And uh, I just think that I'm not that knowledgeable to go there and talk about all these big topics. Uh, it was very naive of me to talk about those things. Uh, it's a lot more complicated. It's, it's a lot bigger. There is a lot more to that. You know, as I'm watching someone uh, called Scott Ritter, by the way, I want to make a shout out uh, to him. Um, he has a channel on Rumble called um, Tour of Duty. Check out that channel. Uh, and check out his website. As far as I remember, it's scottritter.com. He is a former intelligence uh, intelligence officer, a Marine, and a former UN weapons inspector. Um, as I'm listening to this guy, I just realize how much do I not know how much did I not know and how naive was I in my assessments of many, many things. Um, and so I think, I think it's actually not a bad thing that I quit doing cat talk. Mm, I'm not saying it was anything bad really or that I have any regrets about this. And I want to thank those people, everybody, all of you who followed me, who listened to me, who listened to my rants, um, who left me comments, who engaged in conversations. I really do appreciate this, but I just, you know, in hindsight, looking at all that, I realized that I just, you know, I was naively judging about things that I had very little clue about. And uh, so I think it's all for the better, you know. It's all for the better. Nowadays, I think that I, you know, I can privately share something or I can chat about things. I don't necessarily feel like I want to uh, do episodes on something. I just don't think that that's my place to do that. I don't think that I have the experience and the, and the knowledge to do things like this. And uh, on the other hand, I can't pretend that I know less than I already know. Maybe, at some point, maybe I will return with some form of cat talk. It's probably not going to be the same thing, it's going to be something something different. When I feel that I want to talk about something, and I'll be very likely to do it on Rumble. Um, I won't be doing that on YouTube. It's just not the, not the right place for it. Uh, Occasionally, you know, I'm kind of I'm thinking about things, you know, when I'm 
putting things together and analyzing several sources. But as of now, I just I just feel that I don't want to do that. You know, it's uh, a lot of additional work. I'm trying to do tons of music, and I'm also trying to do tons of painting. But you know, it's already difficult because of my current circumstances. Um, it's hard to put everything in the same day, and it's a lot of additional brain work and a lot of analysis, and it takes additional production and just you know, time, time, time. And you see what I'm doing here? I'm just painting. And uh, I just feel that, you know, as of late, I like to keep a lot of thoughts to myself. And just paint. And just paint whatever I feel that I want to paint. And I want you all to just, you know, enjoy the process and watch what I'm doing. And uh, I'm open... I'm open to criticism and I'm open to um, whatever you have to say. Actually, if you're not a painter, uh, that's even better because, you know, I'd like to know what you think as a non-painter, if you're one of those people. But anyhow, I just you know decided that for now, at least... Um, I want to lean more into who I am, an artist. I do music and I paint. That's what I do. Um, and that's what I want to really lean into. I want to feel more in my place than trying to, like they say in Russian, prügment выше собственной головы. <laughs> to jump over your own head, basically. And the expression means um, <laughs> to try to surpass your own capacity for something, to try to kind of <laughs> kind of outclass yourself. You can't really you can't really do that. Uh, you can do what you can do and but you have limitations. So I think I just want to put my efforts more towards art. I think it's more productive, and uh, I think that potentially it's just it's just better for everybody. It's better for me, and uh, hopefully better for the world. At least, you know, I, I think it's a more reasonable course of action. I don't think that I did much good uh, putting out my videos, or talking about, or giving a half-assed analysis of something that I didn't have full knowledge of. Um, and just, you know, it's better to be equipped with hard facts. And when you don't know those facts, you're basically just out there in the open, just ranting about things and just assuming things, and it's all good, you know, but... I, that's really not the kind of information, you know, like, theoretically there was someone who had a ton of questions, someone who wanted to learn about things, right? They would need to go and listen to Scott Ritter. Or Danny Haifong, for example. I'll give the links to these channels, by the way, um, here in the description. Um, Danny Haifong and Scott Ritter, wonderful channels. Lots of things to learn. Mm. So there was someone who was on the fence about this and that and didn't quite, you know, understand what the hell's going on. They would need to go and listen to these people. Um, these guys have guests on their shows, uh, Danny Haifong invites a lot of people, and uh, different people, different perspectives, and they're knowledgeable people. Mm, so, yeah, that's what I basically wanted to say. I think it's important because, you know, on one hand, on a personal level, I just felt that I need to declutter, and I need to kind of cut out everything that is not directly relevant to what I'm doing um, and on a more kind of public level I just felt that you know I'm trying to play a game that I'm not not good at and that's not the right thing to do gosh those those houses somehow this turned out to be quite the challenge 
If it was canvas, somehow, I felt that it would have been easier. But because it wasn't canvas, it was wood panel. Somehow that made it more difficult. I don't, I don't quite know why. Maybe because it was the first wood panel and I just, I was just getting a, getting a hang of it and trying to feel it out and I still couldn't balance out how much oil do I, do I really need. Um, I felt that, that the surface didn't have enough grit, that the oil kind of stayed on the brush but didn't really transfer to the surface. And at some point it got even a little bit annoying. You see, I'm kind of wiping the brush against the surface. And I, I tried to adhere to the good old principle, thin to thick. I really tried. It didn't always pan out. So I ended up painting really thick, but I was still adding a good amount of uh, oil, of linseed oil, to my paint. for fluidity, because some paints were getting really dry. After a few days of painting, a few sessions, some paints were starting to dry out, and I was trying to kind of soften them up a little bit. And by the way, I gotta say that uh, this wood panel with this gesso, non-artistic gesso, right, this uh, stain primer, whatever it's stain remover and primer, whatever that thing is, by Zinsser. I have a feeling that it dries a lot faster than uh, a canvas that is primed with conventional gambling gesso. Just a feeling. Uh, it seems to be the case, because by the time I was signing this painting, the sky felt completely dry. So, I don't know, I'm, I think that probably Maybe this primer gesso just absorbs the oil into it, kind of takes it in a lot faster. And I'll see how it, you know, how it behaves after a while, you know, a month from now, two months from now, uh, and see if it's still good. And if it is good, if it works, then it works. And then I can just, you know, continue using the same Zinsser primer and uh, just paint more wood panels. And here I am signing the painting on December 1st. Well, the painting was finished on December 1st, but I'm signing it actually later because it was finally a more or less relatively warm day. Now, I want to thank y'all for being with me, for staying on my channel. Thank you very much for watching my content. Thank you for your likes and comments. I really do appreciate this. Thank you for streaming my music. Expect my third single to drop on the 13th. It's coming soon. Uh, next Cat Vibes most likely is gonna be a musical one, and then the next one is gonna be a painting again. Thank you very much for being with me. I love y'alls, and you will hear me on the next episode. Meow. Yeah.